Hi, my name's Leah and welcome to Leah Loves Science, where I answer niche, but necessary, science questions. Today, I wanted to talk about fusion energy and the National Ignition Facility in America making headlines. So for those of you who don't know, I actually work in fusion energy as like a day job <laughs> in all the times when I'm not making videos. Um, so I've kind of been avoiding making a video about fusion energy because it was really important to me that the video was perfect and obviously perfection is the enemy of getting anything done and then I never wrote that video. <laughs> so I will write it though and it will be not perfect, it will be downright average. <laughs> but still, fusion energy is one of my favourite things to talk about and I always enjoy reading about it in the news or watching it in films or just seeing it in general because um, it's often misreported and sometimes misrepresented in films which to me is very amusing <laughs> um, because that's what I do in my day job. I'm a project engineer um, at the UK's National Fusion Research Facility so I spend a lot of my time engineering projects which is super fun. Um, but I thought it'd be really fun to talk about sort of fusion in the news. So recently the National Ignition Facility, or NIF as I'm going to call it, because I can't say it <laughs> out loud. Uh, recently NIF has been in the news and a lot of places have reported it as reaching fusion ignition, which is a really, really big deal in fusion terms. And I was like, wow, no one told me this is massive. This is huge. Um, and it's because they haven't reached fusion ignition, it's been slightly misreported. So I wanted to talk about what's actually happened because it's still super exciting and sort of what that means in terms of fusion. So I'm going to define a few things first. So let's start with fusion energy. So fusion energy is a kind of nuclear energy where instead of taking one big nuclei and splitting it into two smaller nuclei to release a bunch of energy, we're taking two smaller nuclei and mashing them to... Ow, my fingers! I don't know if that was audible. <laughs> Hit my bones together. Instead of taking one big one and splitting it into two small ones, we're taking two small ones and mashing it into one big one. And that also releases energy. Um, compared to uh, regular nuclear energy, fission energy, that we run nuclear power plants with at the moment, it requires, it produces a lot less radioactive waste, well, it produces shorter lived radioactive waste, so the radioactive waste that is produced doesn't hang around as long, you know, fission waste tends to last hundreds of thousands of years, a really really long time, uh, whereas fusion doesn't produce the same kind of waste. And in addition to that, fission reactions have to put a lot of energy in to slowing the reaction down, which is how reactors go critical. Because when the systems go down and the cooling stops for whatever reason, the reaction can get out of hand really quick and it goes like and then a nuclear explosion. Whereas fission, whereas fusion, they're gonna get them the right around. <laughs> whereas fusion, you put a lot of energy into speeding the reaction up. So if all of your systems, like if there was a power cut and all of the systems went down, the reaction would just fizzle out immediately because all of our energy is going into keeping it going. So it's, it's arguably safer than nuclear fission, nuclear fusion. So that's what fusion energy is. It's another kind of nuclear energy where instead of making one big one, two little ones, you take two little nuclei, you make them one big one. Super cool. Um, and our goal for nuclear fusion is to what's called baseload um, the energy sector. So we want to take out the fossil fuels that are currently in there and replace them with a big section of nuclear fusion. So it's not to replace green energy like solar panels or wind power. It's just to replace the ones that we don't want in there anymore. It's called baseloading. Um, and it's a really cool green energy. It is very, very efficient. So any fuel that you do use um, becomes a lot more energy <laughs> um, comparatively. It doesn't produce any carbon when you're running it. And as I said, it does produce radioactive waste, but it's very short lived compared to nuclear fission. So it's actually a lot easier to deal with, which is very cool. So that's what fusion energy is. That's what we're working towards. We're working towards putting it in a power plant 
and taking away some fossil fuels, which would be cool. To define like some terms when it comes to fusion, there's something called scientific break even. So scientific break even is defined as the amount of energy, just pure energy that your reaction is making is more <laughs> or equal to the amount of energy that you're putting in. So there is a a letter <laughs> called Earth. Fusion energy gain factor, it's Q. And when Q equals one, it means you're getting the same out as you put in. So a lot of places around the world are working towards scientific break-even where Q equals one. We also have something called engineering break-even. And engineering break-even means that your the electricity that your power plant produces is enough to fuel your power plant. So your electricity that you may or may not be producing, you can siphon some of that off and plug it back into your reactor. And it's basically powering itself. So it's still got a heating system, but the heating system is being powered by itself. And this would be really cool. This is exactly what you want for um, use in a power station. You want it to make more electricity than the electricity that it's currently eating up. And that's another sort of big step. Once you've got scientific break-even, you want engineering break-even. And many places around the world are also looking for something called fusion ignition. And this is really quite a specific thing. So this means that your fusion device, whatever it looks like, um, is heating itself inside. So in the same way that a um, nuclear fission reactor can, kind of powers itself on the inside, so the heat that's being generated is generating more reactions, we want that for fusion. Hypothetically, it would be cool. I don't know that we need it for a power plant, but it's what a lot of people are working towards. And this happens when your Q, when your fusion energy gain factor is really, really high, like it's outputting a lot more than um, you're putting in. So ignition is something very specific. As I say, the fusion energy gain factor Q has to be super, super high for it. And it means that on the inside, the reactions are making more reactions and you can just kind of leave it to do that. You just have to heat it up once and put more fuel in and it will be powering itself which again would be cool. I don't know that it's necessary for use in a power plant because really all you need for a power plant is it to be making electricity, more electricity than it's using. Otherwise it would not be a power plant. <laughs> it would be an experimental device as they currently are. So these are really, really important. At the moment, most fusion devices are working toward Q equals one. So they're working towards scientific break-even. All they want is more energy out than they put in. They're not trying to catch that energy. They're not trying to use that energy for anything. They just want to show that more reactions are happening for their money. <laughs> when I heard that NIF had achieved fusion ignition, I was like, whoa, <laughs> what? Huge news. Because um, in terms of the world, the world record is currently held by JET in the UK, at the UK Atomic Energy Authority, for a Q of 0.67. So if you put in 100 joules of energy into JET, JET produces 67 joules <laughs> of energy. And that's the world record. That's like peak at the moment. It's not achieved scientific break even. Nobody has, question mark. I don't think anybody has. <laughs> Um, so that's like the big aim at the moment. So I was like, whoa, NIF have achieved Q of huge number. They've achieved ignition. What? Amazing. Um, and I looked on their website because I was like, this is what I must read everything. And, and they haven't. And that's why I was surprised. <laughs> NIF have really, really increased their fusion energy gain factor. They've really increased their Q but they've only increased it to 0.7. So they're now um, putting out 70% of what they put in. So if you put in 100 joules, they're now producing 70 joules, which is huge. That's like big news. That, that is really big news. That is much more than they've ever achieved before, but it is not in ignition <laughs> as some places may or may not be reporting. 
but still this is extremely cool they do an extremely interesting kind of fusion so most places around the world i think it's probably safe to say do something called magnetically confined fusion so what they do is they take their fuel they have it in gas form it's usually a kind of hydrogen and they heat it and they heat it heat it heat it, heat it, heat it until it becomes a, a superheated gas called a plasma and plasma is very cool because it behaves very weirdly it's almost like a fluid um, and all the atoms kind of separate. So you have a fluid that's like nuclei and electrons and it's doing all weird stuff and you can control it with magnets. So a lot of places around the world are doing magnetically confined fusion where they have a very complicated magnetic setup and they can basically hold the fuel in place while it fuses. It's extremely cool, that's what we're doing at work. My, my personal favourite form of fusion, but well, I would say that because that is where I work. <laughs> Whereas NIF are doing something very, very cool. <laughs> Another, this is so cool. Whereas NIF is doing inertially confined fusion, which is where they have a pellet of fuel and it's really, really small. It could fit on the tip of your thumb, finger, finger thumb. And it's like the size of a pupil. If you can imagine, it's like really, really extremely tiny little dab of fuel and they have like I think their targets must be handmade that might be incorrect but they have little tiny targets that the fuel sits in and it's amazing and they have the world's largest laser pointed at this little tiny tiny little fuel pellet and this laser is genuinely the largest laser in the world it is three football pitches in size it must be a nightmare to to sort of tune <laughs> to calibrate um, I don't know if that's American football pitches or like football football pitches, by the way. Do let me know in the comments if those are different sizes because, I, mm. <laughs> but it's three football pitches <laughs> in size, uh, the largest in the world. And they fire this laser at this fuel pellet. And what it does is it has a fusion reaction. So it kind of like slams into it and then the pellet goes and it, does does a fusion that's probably what experts would say does a fusion um and it's a really really cool and interesting way of doing it um inertially confined fusion so it's slightly different from what a lot of places are doing it's different from what jet was doing when it reached q equals 0.67 but still it's a very cool way of doing fusion you should check out um their in fact, their Twitter page is quite accessible. <laughs> I was having a look on their Twitter page. And yeah, it's super cool. So it's not doing ignition. I, I would have been shook, genuinely. <laughs> um, but it is at the stage where it's getting closer to scientific break-even, which is massive. Um, because everyone at the minute is aiming for a Q equals one. All they want is the same out as they put in. And it's so difficult to achieve because um, anything that we currently build is kind of struggling engineering wise. So everything that we put into our fusion devices is like top of the line. So any new fusion device that gets made is even more top of the line. So we're basically trying to eliminate losses until we can get a Q equals one, which is super exciting. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. There will be hopefully a full blown, this is what fusion is video soon. But as I say, I am, cursed by trying to make it good. Maybe I should just sit down and film it. That would be nice. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click like below and subscribe to the channel via the orb. If you have um, any good examples of fusion in film or TV, or if you see a headline and you're like, what, what does this mean? <laughs> please help me. Um, then do feel free to leave it in the comments or send it me on Facebook or Instagram because they have messaging. And if you want to see more videos like this, we have Who Likes Science Short Shorts playlist right here. Bye. So the National Ignition Facility in the US is run by the Lawrence Livermore Christ. <laughs> I want to get everything I say right um, because I talk about fusion a lot and it would be really bad if I were making videos about fusion that were wrong. No, this is all.